Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the, uh, what is today? October meeting of the Conservation Board of Phillips Town. Um, I'd like to start with approving minutes. It's not September. Not September. Okay. So we have July. August? June and July. June and July. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not July and August? Oh, I'm sorry. July. July and August. Yeah. Okay. Has everybody looked through them? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can I have a motion for July to yes, approve the minutes? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It is June. There was no August. Oh, Sorry. you're right. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Was June. You're right. So okay. we just approved July. So we, we have to do it again. <laughs> okay, let's delete that. Okay. June <laughs> minutes. Do I have a motion to approve it? Sure. Second. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's, that's, I think that's really the first time we've ever made a blunder like that of any type, which is good in all these decades. Okay, so then we have a, <clears throat> we didn't have an August meeting, right? Nope. So can we do September or we don't have, okay. But we haven't done July. We just did June, right? So now yes. we need to do June. We did. we did it. Okay. Sorry. So, so we're good. Okay. Okay. Great. Here we go. We're on a <laughs> roll now. All right. <clears throat> Let's uh, start with, because I think this is going to be easy. Um, hopefully I'm saying it right. Capicella, 275 Indian Brook Road, Garrison. Yeah, Nick, could you just come up and quickly just describe the project? Hi, I'm Nick Lissicato, Lissicato's Instruction. Uh, we were reached out, um, the owner, Claire Capicello, reached out to us. She had some erosion. She has a kind of a head wall around the stream, um, and it's eroded from a couple of the floods that they've had. So it is encroaching, and every year it winds up taking a little more of her. It's kind of a soft land there, which is pretty sandy material. What she's asked us to do um, is from the edge of what's, structured which is a concrete re kind of retaining wall which holds up a little gazebo she has is just to put some riprap on the edge to kind of armor that section unfortunately it's on a turn where the stream kind of turns so it causes erosion every heavy rain um, we don't have really good access it's a very small machine it would go in with so the rock we're talking about using is kind of um, like two people could struggle to move it, but not lift it. So that kind of moderate sized stone and just simply create a buffer that it would stop taking her land. And that's basically it. Yeah, and I thought that this would be a project that I could um, permit outside of the board. It's a pretty minor, uh, minor activity. Um, I've been to the site, uh, I think maybe last year, um, and met with Claire and took a look at it. Um, and she was having difficulty finding a contractor who could work the site and make sure that they were being environmentally responsible um, enough because the site is pretty restricted from a machinery a point of view. Um, and then also, like Nick was saying, this, they, what ended up happening was that the stream bank that's near her home essentially got washed out from, I think, that, Ju that July 9th storm. Mm. Um, and uh, essentially, yeah, it would be, you know, she's losing her property. She's losing property. Um, just flowing, you know, it, it was it eroded into uh, Indian Brook. So um, that was, you know, my pers my perspective when I saw it. So. As of now, we're outside the brook. The, the the actual water is quite a few feet away from where we would be basing our. So we're not we're not impacting it for disturbing it, if you will. Do you, do you have to add more soil back since it washed out, or no? I think or? we'll be able to do it with. Um, with some larger rip y type stuff. I don't think we'll wind up putting soil back. I think we'll just armor it a few layers deep of some heavy, more much heavier aggregate. Just protect what's there? Correct. Any questions or comments? Otherwise, we okay with uh, yeah. Max? Because it's, it's pretty much a storm repair. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll straighten out the permit fees and all that. I don't think <clears throat> I, I'll have to go back and actually see what we classified as. If we're going to classify it as a repair, then um, that may be waived. So, okay. yeah. Just let me know. Okay. All right. Thank yeah. you very yeah. much. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. 
Okay, let's continue with old business, which is Salerson and Korinsky on Steuben Lane. Some of us were able to go to a site visit, and I think we were shocked at the level or the lack thereof of, uh, what is it? What is it considered? Not Continental, Cortland Lake, I think is the official name? Yeah. Cortland Lake, yeah, it's in pretty bad shape. Um, but yeah, thank you all for that could come out. I thought it was productive to at least to see the lake and see the site and all that, uh, lack thereof lake, I guess. Um, but just to uh, reiterate what we're, uh, Annie Menes from Garrison Foundry, our client is here today, um, Jane. Um, and um, they um, are hoping to improve on their property. Um, it had an existing deck that was fairly small and kind of in disrepair. And as I mentioned last time, um, we'd kind of gotten the, we had gotten the green light from Greg to go ahead and do demolition. And then he was sort of like, hey, you know what? You should talk to the conservation board. So at that point we stopped and we explained that when he saw, saw you guys. Um, they're hoping to increase the uh, deck two feet towards the lake and then um, also adjacent to it create this little carport um, that they, they can tuck a car underneath. Um, but largely just to improve upon, it's sort of a, it's a gambrel roof little house and kind of give it this a um, little bit more of a modern look and then it's a tight little lot so trying to create a little bit more functionality to them. Um, so that they can put a dining table up above and a car underneath. Um, and uh, I can speak for Jane that we're very open to um, any kind of plantings. Right now there's sort of a mishmash of plantings there um, that uh, they inherited. So um, yeah, so that's basically, it's a fairly straightforward uh, what we're hoping to do, I think. Max, have you been at the site? Uh, I drove by. I was down there. I was actually meeting with the um, lake committee. I was meeting with the lake committee, and I was I drove past that the house. So, I think it's a pretty straightforward, you know, project. I don't know if the board is, com you know, compelled to do some sort of mitigation plantings. Or I mean, I think what we were thinking about is, and I think you had brought up the suggestion, whether it's a mitigation planning or a drainage, because right now. Anything that happens on the existing driveway, if a car leaks oil mm -hmm. or it's washed, it's essentially going into the lake. You know, uh, I, and I think you had suggested, it, you know, what can we do to make a buffer? Is it vegetation? Is it a drain with an oil trap that would protect the lake and something that's not onerous to do but can be pretty simply done? Uh, driveway uh, it's currently asphalt um, and we talked I liked uh, I like both ideas um, I thought that I really liked the idea of the plantings I thought that would be quite beautiful um, and then we looked at the lake edge and we noticed um, sorry, you noticed some of the that there were some invasive or not uh, non invasives <laughs> um, some natural vegetation there that are native to the lake um, so maybe kind of trying to create around where the edge of the deck comes um, a nice like little planting bed of natural native species um, that would help beautify. And then um, as far as a um, some sort of drain, uh, I think that's doable also. We just would have to figure out like where to, where to put it and um, where it would go because the site's pretty limited as far as um, space. <laughs> right, right, it is limited. Andy, you had also mentioned core logs mm -hmm. possibly yeah. well, during- we, we need- uh, yeah. we, you know, for the construction you're going to be doing, 100%. we need to protect it. And I thought that core logs would be better than um, wire back silt fence because mm -hmm. I think just digging in is going to do more mischief mm -hmm. with a small amount of work being done. Yeah. The contractor was there, and um, after the meeting, we went and reviewed the core logs, and he said, no problem. So he'll, he'll put those all around. Um, so. There was one area that had some the refuse yes. yeah like kind of debris on the yep. side of the yard yep yeah he, he may have already cleared that out um but i'll that's going to be cleared out so he had kind of um pulled out some of the when we did demo put some stuff over there so he'll haul that away and then um I, yeah that's another little spot that can be beautified so i mean i Personally, I think it's a small enough project that we could vote on, a, if everybody feels the same, a conditional permit where a max could oversee. Because what's going to need to be on the plan is what type of uh, 
mitigation strategy we have to protect during construction, which seems it's going to be core logs, and then are we putting in uh, plantings and or an oil trap? Mm -hmm. And I think that would pretty much cover what needs to be done. What would, what would an oil trap look like in something like this? Normally, I just can't visualize it. It's it's a drain. It's basically it's, it's like a street drain. Mm -hmm. um, we've permitted it on some of these sites we've looked at. Um, on Route 9. So essentially you have the drain but underneath it there's a filter material that Absolutely. needs okay. to be um, uh, maintained every once in a while. I mean but since it's, it's only... Spill kit, then. What's something, that? Something like a built-in spill kit like to capture the oil yeah, kind of? Yeah. Something in that order. So that's what we're looking for. I mean those uh, that's what I would see as being the conditions of the permit. That sounds great. You know, um, you know there were some like uh, arrowroot, I believe, growing along the edge of the wall, which is native. But right now, I mean, I, I was shocked. There's no lake right now. Yeah. yeah, they drew the lake down to work on the dam. Yeah. So. We took a little field trip to look at the dam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Afterwards. Jane was saying it just has to fill up with rain, or I don't is, know. Is there an oil tank anywhere near that area? I don't believe so. No. No. They, um, uh, there's no oil. Uh, they don't run on oil. They do have propane, but it's up the hill. Um, it's um, so behind the house. Yeah, and then there's it's up it's behind the house, uh, to, uh, facing the street. And where's the septic? And uh, the septic is up behind the house. Actually, I, we were when we thought when we were there, we thought it was below, but it's up behind, it's up behind the house, back of the house. Back of the house. It's the street side. Yeah. Septic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming the a little, like, that exists is not spot. something that would be permittable today, but unfortunately, that's a tremendous amount of continental village. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and they're grandfathered in; they never get changed. Yeah, but that's not an issue here. Then. So, are we comfortable with uh, putting it in Max's hand? Absolutely. Yeah, I think okay, so, yeah. so then. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away. Okay, so, so with that said, you know, um, we've mentioned the two conditions. Max will oversee it. Do I have a motion to approve? I make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So next steps would be talk to Greg and Max. Yeah, if you can get me a site, like a revised site, site plan, plan with all of those details yeah. that they just listed onto it. Yeah. Um, that way I can just cite that in the permit and then we can yeah. move forward from there. That sounds good. I can get your email from Greg. I might ask yeah. you like if you had some suggestions of plants and what was going sure. on there. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, we need to Yeah. I just just so I don't know what part of this, but when we moved here, we actually got the board to hire a lake manager. Because there was no lake manager, it was disgusting. I, I, it was disgusting. So the lake manager from Warren Brook is now hired by the board, which they hopefully have a plan and maybe get some grants to see what they can do to improve the lake. Yeah, I'm supposed to have a conference call with them, uh, the lake committee. AJ or yeah. whatever, and then the lake management company. Yeah, we were the ones so. that were like battling to say, why don't we do anything about the lake? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, you. you, sir, are representing? Uh, that's on my. Right? Yep. Oh, <laughs> You're up, please. Please introduce yourself. Good evening. I'm Douglas Cooper. I represent the owner, Manny Yanez, of um, the Audemars property on Route 9. This project is a two-phase project. The first phase consists of a gas station, Dunkin' Donuts, and a flex building at the front along Route 9. You can see it in the image there as well. And phase two is at the rear of the property. It's not seen. It's quite a distance away from Route 9, and that would consist of a solar farm. We've um, designed the project such that it's outside of the floodplain and outside of any wetland area. There's a brook um, down towards the center of the Bull property. Creek, creek right. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, 
that's really the, the uh, introduction to the project. So. Cheryl, what's the calendar for this? Because I think we need to do a site visit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have time then, because we need to do a site visit. Neil requests that we get comments to them by October 18th, which does not seem very realistic. Well, can, we, can, can our comments be that we need to review the plan? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we, need to, we need to review the plan. And we need to go to the, the site. Yeah. Um, Building or yes, the building is being dem would be demolished. Completely gone down. Okay. Yes, yes, and so all, all the drainage stormwater would be underground. It's designed. It's in, in the, you can see the the stormwater in the packets that you have. Um, can we so go through the rest of your slides that you have? Yeah, that would make right. sense. Mm. Do you, do you sure. have something in your packet with this? Excuse me. Do you have something in your packet with this? Yeah, yeah, I didn't get plants. it in my packet. Yeah, I didn't get one either. I didn't get. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. I, I got a quick question. What is? Let me grab my plan. Uh, so it, it's a flexible use building. It's really designed for small small office and like contractor storage. The Rental, it's rental space. So anything can go in there. Within the parameters of zoning use, yes. That, that zone for this particular property. So I know that small office contractor storage is ad ad admissible in this zone. So that's mm -hmm. what was proposed. So how, how much fuel will be on site? Uh, it's showing in the packet. I think there's uh, four regular pumps and three diesel. No, the amount of fuel. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm not certain. Um, the engineer would have to answer that. He's not here tonight. All right. So, so you're not the project engineer. No. You are. Other uh, than. I, well, I'm the architect. Okay, you're the architect. Okay. Yeah. And there's currently no tanks there, right? There's no fuel tanks there. I don't no. Um, I don't know if anything's above ground. There's nothing underground. So I know from the conservation uh, board standpoint, you know, we are going to have concern about uh, fuel being within an aquifer and uh, on the edge of a floodplain. Yeah, That's and right off the back. The uh, access to the roof of the property, if they're going to be doing any improvements on that road, that would fall within that buffer. It would require a permit from this board. Um, so, so that would that would be another. Is and I'm trying to remember the that bridge. Is that bridge being used by anybody else at this point? No, no, no I didn't. No, it's one property. There's no easement or any. Okay, because it was there. marked on the plans as an easement, but I guess it's there's two parcels and they're owned by the same owner, and that was the. That's easement. right. Okay. Yes. Because I believe that bridge probably will alternate. That we need work too at some point, which is probably going to be a separate. That needs permit. to be assessed, but that's phase two. Everything right. that's planned in phase one is right up along Route Nine, and at quite a distance from the floodplain. Phase two right. is the solar farm. Is the solar yes. farm, but it it'll be for uh, the planning board to make a sequent declaration, and uh, either way, you know, they're probably going to look at both phases at the same time as the state okay. law requires. Well, yeah. Can you can you just walk us through this plan here? What the green represents in each polygon in, in each area? Uh, yeah, I so on the top right I believe that is the steep slopes. Uh, and then the on the left, the light green there is the floodplain. So when you refer you're referring to floodplain, is that a a hundred foot setback from the banks of the stream or is that the actual FEMA flood point or flood map overlay? Um, I think that's the overlay. Uh, yeah, I, I can confirm that. I'm not yeah, be, we'd be interested in knowing if that's been delineated. The wetland's been delineated, and the hundred foot setback has been added to your plan, so you could see whether or not there is any interaction with. Yeah, we stayed way outside of the buff. You know, we're outside of the buffer completely. Okay. Was yeah. it delineated? Did you have a? I, 
I can't. See, I don't have a packet with me, but it might be in there. Okay, maybe I can see. Isn't there a lot of rock outcroppings up there that are going to have to be removed? Uh, not really. No, the front, the front part of the property is no. pretty low. Sure. I don't know what I went by there. I see a whole lot of rock all, all in there. The rocks are back where the trucks are parked. Yeah, there are no more trucks. <laughs> it's all cleaned up. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Moratorium on the oil storage. Does anybody yeah, know? Yeah, I was going to ask the same thing, Tony. And so the other question is, where are we at with the solar stuff? I guess that would be you. It, is, uh, it was in front of the town board in draft form at the last board meeting, and now it's going into conversations with the with town council, town engineer, and the building department to look at some, some last steps before it comes back in front of the board, either in November or December. Or, yeah. Thank you. But that's looking, Tony, in terms of uh, the fuel is for bulk storage, which I'm not sure yeah, well, one this was quite. The other was where, where, where the town right. was. I know they were yep. drafting something about solar and a, a while ago we had talked about that, but he says that's up to form. I mean, one of the things that's definitely missing from the plan is delineation of yeah. uh, wetland water course buffers that needs to be there. Um, I think we need to have a site visit, but I think we need to have a site visit with an engineer present that's working on the project. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. complicated. Yeah, yeah. This is and I, I think that where the building is needs to be delineated, where potentially the tanks are going to be, needs to be, you know, staked out. When, when would you propose to do that? It depends how quickly you want to try to move everything forward. I mean, yeah. we could have a site visit, you know, within the month. Okay. So that we could talk about this um, in our November meeting. You know, that's that's up to you. First, yes, right? it has first. to be delineated. It has, has to be delineated, and this is a complicated enough project that since I was sort of expecting the engineer to be here, not the architect. No right. offense. I understand. No offense. <laughs> no, I'm a substitute. Um, no, no, it's it's okay. It's fine. Plans for all of us. And I'm sorry. What? Can we get the, the a copy of these two. Yeah, I mean, we should get a set. Um, but we should get a set with the new delineations um, on them. And also, as I said, I think what should be uh, staked out in the field is the footprint of the flex building, um, where the uh, don't need to have individual pumps, but where the pad is for um, the uh, gas pumps. Probably where I assume there's going to be a convenience store or the Dunkin' Donuts that should be, you know, again, four or six corners staked, however it is, and where the underground tanks will be. Mm -hmm. I think that's very, very important. And we should, since, you know, unless uh, if you want to move this along, then I would suggest that when we schedule a site visit, that the engineer is there with the revised plans. Rather than otherwise, what's going to happen is the engineer is going to have to come at our next meeting and yeah. explain things to us where some of this could be done in the field. Yeah. That's, you know, right. the applicant's choice. That's fine. So I'll coordinate with Cheryl. Yeah. And I would, while it falls far more in the planning board and the zoning board, and I assume, Cheryl, that the planning board is the lead agency on this. Um, uh, it is is whether we should be what we should be looking at the bridge whether we need to look at the solar field Well, my, my, what my thought was with the solar is this is it being conveyed that the solar is is being considered as a mitigation for this project and this phase one part of part of the project is this I don't think there'll be any detail it's it's um, down the road I, I don't know if that means we need to address it a second time from the beginning for I mean, phase two. The this solar farm is a for-profit enterprise, correct? It's not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming is it, I always forget, is it class one, two, or is it A, B? I assume it's one of the latter where it's producing more power than would be used on site. Definitely. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the whole goal. Yep. With the for-profit. I'm so. just thinking, is this an attractive component? Is this some, a component to the project that the town would be interested in? 
and is that going to sell be sell the project a little bit more to the planning board or our board or are we going to consider that because there's components of this in terms of access like you were talking about over the bridge you know the longevity of the site all those things kind of rely on that crossing there um, and if we're considering this as an incentive and a, you know to the phase one portion of the project this seems like something that could easily get dropped down the road mm -hmm. Really yeah, it's. Until we see the plans. <laughs> yeah, and I think we need to see the, the also need, the wetland delineation we, yeah. to see exactly what we're talking about. Right? So what is down the road? When you say down the road, oh, it could be five or ten years. So, yeah. You know, frankly, I never heard it as an incentive, so I don't believe the planning board is looking at it in that light right. at all. Right. No, I understand that. Yeah, I'm. I myself personally am cautious of using um, particularly commercial. Um, solar farms as a mitigation measure because they take up even though this one is not big they take up space and um the jury's out on what type of habitat does well within well, them i only bring it up because this seems exactly like what the, the instance uh, jason was posing to us a couple months ago um, and now we have a project that's you, right. that's that right. exactly so we've looked at implementing <laughs> something else on that part of the property as you can see it's it's far removed from the front. Um, and there was nothing but you could do residential, maximum of like three houses. It wasn't feasible at all. Um, and having the solar farm, there's very little um, vehicular traffic there. There's just, you know, not much use really that um, would affect anything else. Right, understood. Okay. Where would the, uh, so like this is more of a commercial, well it was a commercial site, but like more people are going to be coming in and out probably. So where are the septics going to go in the, in, in the fields and all Everything that? Everything is underground um, it, on the area where the new construction is. But so it would be an expansion though, obviously, right? Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. And you can, those are on the plans, you can see them. Yeah, that also should be. Um, what we'll request on the plans is where also the septic. I don't yeah, remember all seeing that. Is, is actually showing. Is it showing? I, yeah. For some reason, that I missed. The wrong package up or something. Did they approve one? No, we haven't gotten one. We've only first proposed in the planning board about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the very first introduction. Right. Where are you seeing the septic? I think that's it. There also has to be a zoning change there too, correct? No. No? No, we're going for a variance only for the drive through component because drive throughs and that district are not. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know it's online, but it's so much easier oh, to read well, it. It's when it's like the problem like is, is that. that what I'm seeing on the plans is a drainage gallery, and I'm assuming that's for impervious surfaces. That's for stormwater, I believe, right? Yeah, stormwater. So we'll put together a short memo, okay. which will delineate what we want to see on sure. the revised plans. And then we'll bring it at the site meeting. Yes. Yeah. It would be great to transmit it to us beforehand, if possible. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments anybody has? Do we have, do we know like historically the range that this is flooded in like high level with some of these you know major storms that we've had like how how at risk is some of this new construction going to be from from the flooding? From it's the flooded pretty well, but I don't know the level. I have to because we had uh, after I mean this goes back what is it twelve years ago I think Irene. We were looking at something, um, one of the bridges that had washed out, and somebody else wanted to do some work, and uh, it was, was pretty. Near Walmer was that Walmer could have Lane? Been. It was yeah. significant. Oh, it, it took the whole bridge out. Yeah, it was. I wish Nick Lisicatos was still here because yeah. he had done some of the repairs. Right. It was. It was very significant. So, and I just don't know the elevate. I don't remember. The, I know I've been back there, and I've been on that bridge probably for a permit that had come up 15 years ago, but I just don't remember the elevations because the elevations make a big deal. If it's and higher up. Yeah, route, the area by Route 9 is definitely at a higher elevation than where the bridge is. Right. Right. So. Yeah, I'm just 
Speaking of get boats, you know, when like you see the, the gas tanks and the pads there, and you know, they always get oil on them, and so yeah, that's much washing. higher up than than. Yeah, I don't know the elevations. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so we're going to draft a memo to the planning board. That's yep. Of what we're, we're looking for. Yep. And we'll Thank do it. Okay. We'll do a site visit. Thanks. Thank you for coming in. Okay. So I, I'm gathering. Um, there's nobody here for five Juniper Hill. So I guess we'll table that till next month. Um, what else do we have? Do we have any unfinished business or new business? What's that? Unfinished business or new business? Uh, the only updates I was just mentioning in the beginning of the meeting is that the uh, stormwater management plan is drafted and now open for public comment, which will close next month. Uh, and we're hoping to hold another stormwater meeting um, in November. We had a kind of... Um, difficulty getting attendance this month, but I wanted to present that that plan to the group um, and kind of kind kind of go over roles and responsibilities and um, assign, like in tasks moving forward uh, and some um, administrative benchmarks that the town just needs to make, stay on top of. But that that was about it. So we're in a good place um, right now, I think, from a compliance standpoint. So yeah, that's it. Anybody if you to see the draft? I think the draft plan was circulated. Um, to that group at least. But yeah, I mean, I know. Now I, it's online I got it. as well. Yeah. If you guys want to read it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's we a had a lot of, of help from the Walden Environmental Engineering Firm, so that was good. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Did, did you ever find out any more information about that spill in Cortland Lake that I mentioned? No, I didn't. I was going to talk to Neil. That was the other thing. More information about it, but yeah, I would think Neil Toman would know because he's he's been involved with the um, the dam repairs pretty heavily. And he's at the county soil and water. So, yeah. So I was gonna we were gonna talk um, the other day. So I'll I'll mention that to him again. I want we were gonna see him at this meeting in October, but um, okay. I can look into that. Yeah, I asked around. I just couldn't find anybody that knew anything. So, um, and I think I mentioned it before uh, to um, the folks that were here from Continental Village. But I met with uh, the Lake Association for Cortland Lake um, on behalf of the town, and they're really interested in managing the sediment level that's in the the lake currently, and trying to pursue funding to dredge a lot of material that's washed into the lake from these large hurricanes and storms. Um, so I met them down there and uh, they have a lake management firm from GEI that's currently uh, retained by the board, their um, lake committee. So I think that that consultant has drawn up a management plan with water quality sampling and all that stuff and is kind of synthesizing that all now. And they're gonna have a call with that guy at some point to talk management um, goals essentially for, for the lake. And so the town owns the water body um, and, and Continental Village is kind of tasked with maintaining it. Um, it. Isn't it jointly owned also by the town of Cortland? Yeah. Because it's Spain. Yeah, it's split. How big is the lake? Do you know when? I think they said 19 acres. Are we own 19 acres? I think it's 30 something maybe. Okay. Yeah. I was asking them. I mean, if, them that. I mean, it would be quite the job to dredge it, but this would be the time because there's almost no water in it. Well, the yeah, and it, so there, that was the discussion we were having. I, I, we were, there's, at the time, I think some of you might have seen that, but there are these islands in the lake, um, and there's a, all this sediment at the north end of the water body right now, and they can't afford to, to remove it completely, but they were thinking of maybe designing some sort of a, a plan to potentially build up around those those islands and create kind of in the, like, ha more habitat and upland portions of um, those island 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 areas. Island yeah. Kind of like stick up. Yeah, like. they were thinking of <laughs> moving it over there and moving some of that sandy material in that area and creating kind of habitat pockets there and then potentially just moving some of that material onto the beach area and then recovering that with sand. Um, it's all like road material. It's all like sandy road material. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder from yeah. where. <laughs> yeah, I wonder yeah. where that comes from. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but that's, you know, that's decades of accumulation, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, that was their, their main concern. But now they have like an actual lake management company there. So 
we're trying to think of creative ways potentially that the town can help um, inputting help with permitting or whatever their small budget at, in Continental Village is for managing the lake, trying to figure out um, what we can do. I mean, we've, we've definitely had projects at a smaller scale where we've dredged and moved material around um, using some local contractors. And so I, th I think both Phillips Town and the town of Cortland had each received from the state about $100,000 for dam repairs. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah there's not a lot. I don't I think there, <clears throat> the lake management group's annual budget's not, not huge either. So, um, you know, I think it kind of creative. That's why the removal of the material is really what would cost a lot. It's if we could re like reposition it in the lake and create kind of habitat structure and, and that wouldn't be looked at as a, you know, overall detriment maybe in the eyes of the DEC if they took yeah, it. Yeah, that would be interesting to have some marshland. Yeah. You know, for what, particularly for, you know, waterfowl. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of birds there right there right now. Has Putnam County Soil and Water done any testing on the, the soil that's there? No, I mean, I don't they, know. Yeah, I don't know if they did any soil sampling I either. I wonder what management. the salinity is of it and whether it's yeah. road salt and other I don't know. funky stuff. I don't know. I'll, I'd be interested in seeing what the lake management company actually did. Um, they might have tested the set at bottom sediment too. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they'll fill me in on that and then I can kind of relay that to the this is the company that Lake Celeste had also hired? GEI. I've heard of them before. Sure, I'm not no, sure where, honestly, one. though. Yeah, no, I've heard of them, too. I yeah. can't place it. Um, but one of the members also on that lake committee is a younger guy that just graduated from ESF, and I thought he may also be a good um, person to recruit for that, the stormwater committee because he lives in Continental Village, um, and there's some outfall monitoring and mapping that maybe he would be interested in doing, and he's right there. And right. He kind of has a background in that, so... Um, I'd like to maybe add him to the list of people who invited them to the next meeting um, if he's interested. So. Makes sense. Yeah, that's that's it. That's all I have, I think. Anybody else have any? Think about Oscar Bell. Um, wh where are they at with their compliance stuff? For you know, there was there was supposed to be, I think, an ad put in the paper. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm asking is I've had several people come up to me saying, "What's going on down there? What's going on?" Yeah, and I said I think there was something in the paper about it. I don't I don't know. I think we we ended up foregoing the the initial the, like newspaper publication. I think they came back in. and We had a secondary discussion, right? Like we kind of slapped them on the wrist for not doing that initially. Mm -hmm. And then was there a public notice? I, no, there wasn't. Yeah. I mean, they had sent it out to their entire mailing list. Right. Um, is it ideal? No. Um, but I think we just lived with it for the time being. The last, the latest that I that I've heard about it is that they notified me that they were doing their second chemical application, and that was earlier this. It was I think earlier this fall, mm -hmm. late summer. So I think now things are supposed to be coming back and growing in. I don't think they're doing the large scale broadcast applications anymore. Yeah, I've seen a lot of geese in there too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the long term plan for the pond is I, I don't know they stopped it seems like they stopped aerating it this time right, I'm not right. really sure there's a lot of duckweed on it now mm -hmm. um, yeah our focus was not on the pond yeah, other than yeah, just, just protecting what there. was there yeah. at the time <clears throat> so okay thank you. <clears throat> yeah. but without the aeration is that an increased risk then for that blue green algae next summer or if it gets you know like I mean it's string algae and eutrophication it's to, yeah. yeah it's it's hard to say yeah I don't I don't think they know exactly what causes those harmful algal blooms. Algal blooms, yeah, probably lack of oxygen. That's what I thought it was. But yeah. and we need to stop calling blue green algae <clears throat> algae. Period. Yeah. You know. Yucky algae. No, it's not an algae. It's not. It's not an algae. It's it's cyanobacteria. It's a, oh, it's a, it's a bacteria. bacteria. Yeah. So. Um. All right, Jason. Do you have anything? Um, no, it, it's the thought, because I've been looking at, we all looked at the proposed solar ordinance, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then recently I had made some comments when Jason had sent it back to a few of us, um, and uh, 
what the town I think was afraid of is leaving excluding solar from ridge lines makes sense. Uh, but uh, as I understand it, they were worried that the scenic overlay is so broad that it would be problematic to do such. And what I, after looking at this plan just before the meeting, I had gone over to Jason, I said, look at the plan. And I don't think, I, I still believe now that it should be restricted within the scenic. Doesn't mean you can't do it but it means it would require regulatory discretion of it. It would most likely be the planning board, though it could come to us or the zoning board to allow it or not. Mm. You know, because I think it needs to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Are you going to see it or not? Um, and if you are going to see it and it's not horrendous, is there a great give back? Which there might be. Because you have to realize with a lot of these commercial solar fields, if you're near the grid, um, that's fine, but oftentimes, I know like um, when in Poughkeepsie, the Oakwood School, Oakwood Friends built a large solar field, um, the neighbors were fine with it until the high tension line had to be brought in. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it, it's a complicated trade-off. Yeah. So. I do feel like what you were suggesting, though, is quite subjective, and it's really hard to have a any sort of an ordinance that has any sort of a teeth, give any sort of teeth, if it's that subjective, it's, you know, we'll know it when we see it. No, well, it becomes, my suggestion was don't, don't, oh, you know, when you disallow something, it doesn't mean it can't be done. It has to go through a review. We've allowed um, Only building in a Only if there's a permitting process. Yes, there has to right. be. So I think yeah. that excluding it from the scenic areas is a mistake. It needs to go through a re review process to look at. And right. unfortunately, a lot of things are, it's subjective or sometimes I think uh, Bob had come up with a better term, qualitative versus quantitative. And I think that's better as a scientist, you know, it, it focuses it better. I, mean, I think just to point out the way the draft law is currently structured is that anything that was non-commercial, so you build solar and you use all of the energy on site, um, is treated as an accessory use. So it goes through that process. Anything that's commercial, like that one that came tonight, would go through a um, the planning board, a special use permit process, and a site plan process. So just in that example, that sort of a solar farm, once it's commercial, would trigger site plan review, planning board, special use permit, is how it's structured now. So that there would be you know, more regulation around it. I think what Andy and I were discussing is that when you look at the scenic overlay, that many of the roads are included with a fair amount of boundary between the roads and all of the wires run along the roads. So it's just a complication of getting anything built to the roads. But everything that's commercial would have to go through a, you know, a site plan process, a special use permit process. That's a proposed regulation? Proposed regulation. Okay. Proposed regulation. Um, but you know, we just discussed it at the last board meeting. Um, and you know, it's, it's a pretty, you know, it's a chunky piece of work. So we're going to mm -hmm. sit down with the council and the engineer. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think there's anything else to say. I mean, I do think just off, you know, without weighing into that case that's before the planning board and you all, like treating solar like a incentive or mitigation is different if they were packaged together. Maybe, you know, but the fact that it's saying, oh, we'll do this phase two and it may not happen for five or ten years indefinite, that's, you know, that seems dangerous. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, just the fact that it's commercial, too, right? So it's for profit. The, to me, that kind of, like, puts it a little lower. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the way we've written the regulation is that if something's commercial, that we would require the developer to subscribe, to have an active plan to subscribe town of Phillipstown residents. Because any commercial, I mean, most commercial, um, well, it's two different. They can, they can sell to somebody who uses all of the energy, like a hotel, 
or they can subscribe people into their solar program. And we're saying they would have to have a plan to subscribe to Phillipstown residents and offer discounts to low income residents, which some communities are doing. So all commercial is not bad if it's commercial that's benefiting residents. Or if there was a like, you know, 15% of the yield goes into some sort of a, a fund, an yeah. energy fund for, you know, residents who need help with energy. Yeah. Costs. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good idea. It's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. New technology needs new, new ways of thinking, right? Well, there is, I think, in the, in the draft bill, there is, I think, for the first time, it says that if any solar is going to remove trees, that it, uh, of a certain size and of a certain amount, have to be approved by the code enforcement officer and replanted. I mean, I don't know, it would be interesting to create some sort of a fund to do that. But anyway, interesting that that came up as we're yeah. talking yeah. about it. <laughs> Okay, anybody else have anything? With that said, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make that motion. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Motion. 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 Thank you. <laughs>